My name is uh, Ebeniza Bolabi. I'm a Ghanaian artist born in Accra some few years ago. Um, I'm an artist by profession. I've been painting for the past 20 years as a full-time artist. Me being an artist, I would say I'm a painter. Um, I'm, I work with acrylic paint. I am quite a versatile artist, so I do know how to handle the oil paint, the pastels, the charcoal, all around all the fields when it comes to painting and the mediums. I can work with all that, but more or less, basically more at time, focus on acrylic painting. And for my style, I see myself an, as an impressionist. Impressionist is somebody who do a painting and you have the normal sky blue but an impressionist will decide to add some few ink colors in there which in real essence of perceiving the sky colors you will not see so my artistic impression about what the sky is supposed to look like and feels like is what i paint in i normally most of the time paint with a palette knife I do some few stuff with the brushes as well. And um, sometimes I try not to bring in too much details or overwhelming details when it comes to my paintings. Uh, my paintings normally don't have, I don't normally sketch, do have uh, studies that I look upon. So I could say I'm an impressionist who is spontaneous when it comes to painting. So my painting, basically the idea that I bring in all those paintings happens when I'm painting. It's not something that is planned. So I'm a Christian and I believe in God and many people may not really believe in that fact, but it's a matter of choice and belief. And um, by no way pushing my belief system on someone, but I believe everything we do, God have oversight over us. So when people look at my paintings, I want them to get the sense of somebody looking at them because of the angle at which I look at, I pick up some of my paintings. Just for you to understand that whatever you are doing, being good or bad, you are being watched. So one way or the other, I like to bring some few issues like some of my beaches where I keep it white clean. You hardly see a very clean beach in Accra or in Ghana these days. So it's one of the ways I want to raise the questions. People look at my paintings and they sometimes tell you, why is the beach so clean? And I said, that is how it's supposed to be. So one way or the other, just to bring in light to the people, let them understand that it's possible to keep our beaches clean and our markets clean. So then, then I focus on the concept, clean market. Even though you have some of these things haphazardly laid all around and not very well structured, it still gives us the opportunity to understand that though things are not structured very well, we can still keep the market clean. Many a times I am being asked, who buys your painting? Unfortunately, I could say most of the times our pain, my paintings are being bought by experts and many a times not Ghanaian. I have a handful of Ghanaians who do appreciate art and do collect my art, which I think is a very good thing. Gone were the days when if you want to do the art, people think it's job for people who cannot find their foot into any profession then they tend to do the arts so many people don't encourage their children to go into the arts but i think now Ghanaians are now beginning to accept the reality that the artist plays a major role in society and they need to give or accord that uh, respect and that attention to and i could say things are beginning to get better Ghanaians are beginning to appreciate art each and every day. Ghanaians are beginning to appreciate art. So I could see the perception about art and the artist is getting better than before. I've been painting for the past 20 years. As a full-time artist, I quite remember my first exhibition I had. I was very surprised. I sold out and my intention 
that particular time was not to sell but to showcase and show people what I do let people also admire and enjoy what I do and it really went very well when it comes to exhibitions it's countless I've had exhibitions across the globe many in Ghana I've had exhibitions in South Africa Tokyo the Netherlands Spain different different Switzerland different 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 places I could say I've had exhibition in. The only unfortunate thing is that it has been very well, a long while since I had an exhibition in Ghana here. Many of our exhibitions recently more or less have been in abroad. I started off with a bit of art in secondary school and um, I was good with the science. So one way or the other, my dad wanted me to go into medicine. So I did a bit of medicine, but along the line, I decided to be a full-time artist. I had some few training here and there, but majority of what I do is more or less self-taught. When it comes to my color scheme, I basically work from the primary colors. Many people find it a bit strange when you literally come to my studio, uh, you see the basic colors of red, blue, I mean yellow. These primary colors and white and maybe probably black, the neutral colors. Whatever color I, sh I need, I should be able to mix. It is one of the things I could say I'm very much happy with myself that I have the ability to mix colors. I think one of the things which also have made me develop the sense of being able to mix colors is the fact that anywhere you travel under the sun, the three primary colors, that's red, yellow, blue, you and the neutral colors, white, black, you always get your hands laid on it. Can you imagine if you want a color like a, a Benciana, which is in the shade of the brown, and probably an art shop doesn't have it, what do you do? You can't just wait for you to get this Ben Sienna to paint. You need to mix it. So this is where I say, if you challenge yourself as an artist to limit your palette to the primary colors, then you can virtually mix any color with the years of learning and practicing, experimenting here and there with bits and bits of the color. And I bring in a lot of vibrant colors because we are Africans. When you talk about Africa, when you go to Mokola, you see the, apart from the sound, you hear we have the sight aspect, the beautiful colors of the clothing of the people going about their normal duties in Makola and all that is an exciting scene to behold. One other aspect to I recently find very fascinating are the night scenes I recently have been working on. I find it very fascinating. It is it, it's, it's one of the most soothing and the most beautiful scenery for you to probably even if you if you, if you go to places in Ghana like a brie on the mountains and you look down the mountains and you see that Accra or probably you have opportunity to travel, you are landing in Accra. Many people okay, there are not many lights in Accra, but look the few light that you have is beautiful. It's a beautiful scene to behold. The night scene of Accra is so beautiful. So I, I feel it's something that excitement that I get from seeing some of this view, sharing it with people in terms of painting it, I think is an interesting thing and a very pleasing moment for me. Concept. I have some few concepts which was developed, I could say, by accident, some of them by mere shed of uh, things probably you are not so excited about. I had this time I was driving to Accra Central, Abubushi specifically, there was too much traffic, wondering what was going on and you had a huge a heap of uh, rubbish in the middle of the road that was causing the traffic. I was so amazed and I had a chat with one of the ladies and all that he told me was the market is not structured very well. I think it's an excuse we hide behind, you said structures in Accra are not very well placed and all that and we litter around and and you see some of these things sometimes somebody may say oh for me 
I'm not littering around. Wherever I'm putting the rubbish will not really affect you. But it does affect us. Look at the like the June flood disasters, for instance, which occurred. I believe there there were many people who died at the resort. There's many people who have had I mean severe burns and all that. You think about what even now what is even having the floods. It involves everybody, whether you are part of the people doing it or not. So one way or the other, how best can we have this attitudinal change? that you will have a Ghanaian traveling to abroad and will not litter around but it comes back to Ghana and it's just I think one of the things that the laws are not punishing enough so I mean to a rubbish somewhere and the Lord really bites you will not do that so one of the some of the concepts I sometimes dwell on is the markets the market scene I call those scenes that beauty within the chaos though it's, it's, it, there's a lot going on there the sheer beauty of communication, transactions, and all those things goes on is beautiful. There was a time I did a painting of KJDR Market. Now KJDR Market is no longer there. I did a painting of Market Circle, it's no longer there. I did a painting of Jamestown, the beach. There's a new landing beach being developed. It's no longer there. So I could say some of the concepts I do are also in my art to record events that we could a, 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 a child would look at it said, what is this? And said, Jamestown. And it's like, it's not the Jamestown you see now. So it's being able to capture just a moment in time and keep it still for posterity to come to enjoy those moments that when we have things not so structured to well in Ghana, but they were yesterday, they were still beautiful. FCSO Kwame Kroma for the Talu reception, I mean the reception area, and some few other paintings for the uh, other offices. I did another commission for Stambik Bank, uh, Stambik Bank, that's Stambik Heights specifically. Uh, Vodafone, I worked with an interior decorator who did the decoration for Vodafone Ghana, so I did some paintings for the CEO office. I've done some stuff for Accra Bui. And, and one of the things to aside my canvas also, canvas work that I do, I also do uh, murals, murals in landscape, and commercial murals in public places and private places. And some of the murals I've done, which is still in existence, the one at the Australian High Commission, we have to do a mural picking up concepts from the Aboriginal and also animal protection and animal preservation for wildlife which I still have it there. I did some flora enhancement at the Lebanese High Commission. So we had a blank wall and I did a painting. An artificial flora on the, on, on the wall. When you look at it, it looks like real paint, real flora, but it's actually a painting. It's quite nice. This one was at UNICEF for the children's day celebrations at UNICEF. We did a very large room depicting the various interventions that UNICEF is offering to children in Africa and in Ghana as a whole and the impacts they are having on children and I mean basically to educate the public on some of the interventions that need to do and awareness that we need to be created. So I could say apart from the canvas, normal canvas painting that I do, I also work on murals which I think is also an exciting thing to work because it's a free I mean basically anybody have the opportunity to own a piece of that particular art piece and you are able to share it to wider audience than the personal collective printing that you I have been approached by many young artists coming up and one of the things I do realize is that many of them are not willing to sacrifice to learn on the job and to learn the nitty gritty about being artists. Um, being an artist is not just picking up a brush to paint 
or picking up a clay to sculpt or picking up a wood to carve it just go beyond that is an apprenticeship which i will say you can either learn formally or learn informally one of the things i will also advise the young up and coming artists is that is for them to be patient with themselves when it comes to money uh, many of them they don't really train not 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 it, it's not more like not a, i'm not talking about formal training per se but it takes years for you to master a craft and being an artist is not just applying the paint on the canvas and having your way it takes much more than that probably you may be splashing color on the canvas i'm not ruining out anybody's art or an artist's work i always give this scenario if you walk into my exhibition with just tiny centimeter dots on the canvases with my signature and you see the price tag and people are buying it you may end up buying it without even thinking so it's not about what is really there but it's about the experiences that you have through the years and one thing too i also want to advise them is to value relationship for me one of the things um I understand very much is a relationship with my clientele, especially Ghanaian client, because an expert will walk into my gallery and purchase a painting and it goes away. 20, 50 years time, these artworks are going to move, are not going to be in Ghana. My great-grandchildren will say my grandfather was an artist, but there is nowhere they could find or lay hold on one of his paintings because all his paintings have been exported. So when you have Ghanaian collectors collecting your art, it's a plus to you as a Ghanaian. And I want to encourage them that they should do as much as possible to build. As a young artist coming up, if somebody is a collect, somebody is collecting your work, build the strongest relations with the person, grow with the person. So that one day when you grow and you become a big time artist, you can boldly beat your chest and say yes i'm big time but i still have my painting back home in ghana here which is i think is very important i think this is a little piece of advice i'll give to the young one and to just sum it to say art is a lifetime profession you never stop learning so they should continue to learn